Game Off winners, Copilot Chat Goes GA, a Chat GPT store, and a pick of the week that promises to put the power of AI in your pocket. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. Happy 2024, everyone. So this is our first episode of the year, and I'm super excited to be back with you all. I hope that you've had a good start of your year. So far, we've had some very good reaction memes, and so that's always good. I am wearing a hat this week because it is supposed to snow in Seattle, so it's a little bit cold, and Seattle is also really not good with the snow. Now, as we kick off 2024, we've announced the winners of the Game Off 2023. And Game Off is GitHub's annual game jam that challenges individuals and teams to build a game during the month of November using whatever game engine or library or framework uh, you want. And this year's theme was scale. And to paraphrase my friendly Riley, man, did the devs deliver. There were 632 games uh, created in just one month, and then creators spent thousands of hours over the last few weeks playing, rating, and reviewing each other's games. And the top-rated game this year is called Glory to Scale, and it's described as immersing players in a dystopian world where, as a resident of the totalitarian state scale, they must navigate a seemingly peaceful society under the watchful eye of the Ministry of Truth and omnipresent surveillance challenging players to uncover the truth by observing those who observe others. Uh, other top games include Arthometer, uh, Grapple Pack, Scale Travel, Infinite Scaling, and The Scales of Judgment. Uh, I love all these names, I love all the puns. I've got a link to a blog post written by Lee Riley that has all the winners and links to all the games in the show notes in the description. Be sure to check out uh, these and, and congrats to all the participants. Moving on to some AI news, I've got a couple of pieces of uh, news to update you on. So first, at the very end of 2023, but after we had filmed our last episode, GitHub Copilot Chat officially became generally available for all individuals and businesses. And Copilot Chat is a chat interface inside your IDE powered by GitHub Copilot, and it's available right now in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. It's powered by GPT-4, and you can do things like ask questions about code, use it to create unit tests, get information about code blocks, and more. And it's available to all GitHub Copilot users for free as part of your Copilot plan. And as a reminder, GitHub Copilot is available at no cost to verify teachers, students, and maintainers of popular open source projects. And so I've got a link to the blog post announcing Copilot chat in the show notes and the description, as well as a link to the docs for getting started. And speaking of Copilots, Microsoft Copilot, which is a separate product from GitHub Copilot, I know, uh, it now has an official app for iOS and Android, as well as a standalone website at copilot.microsoft.com. And this is different from the Bing app that used to offer access to Microsoft Copilot, and it's, it's more of a generic you know, chat client like ChatGPT. But unlike ChatGPT, you can use GPT-4 in the Copilot app or website for free, so that's really cool. And I've got a link to that in the show notes and the description down below too. And speaking of ChatGPT, OpenAI announced this week um, that their GPT store is now available to subscribers of ChatGPT+. And the GPT store is where developers can offer up their own custom GPT models to other users. And, and right now, OpenAI is, uh, is featuring custom GPTs from companies like Canva and AllTrails and Consensus. And OpenAI says that it's also going to be opening up a revenue program for developers based on uh, engagement with the GPTs in the coming months, and, and devs can build their own custom GPTs to include in the store. So I've got links to all that stuff in the show notes in the description too. Moving on to some sadder news. Computer science pioneer and Pascal creator Nicolas Firth died on New Year's Day at the age of 89. And as the register notes in their excellent obituary, uh, Firth might best be known as the creator of Pascal, a hugely influential programming language, but that was hardly all he did. In 1984, he won the Turing Award, and he was responsible for uh, the creation of nine programming languages and an operating system. And so I've got a link to the register's obituary in the show notes in the description, as well as a video interview that Firth uh, did in 2018 where he talks about his career and his work. And now it's time for the GitHub Project Spotlight. And this is where I spotlight a great project on GitHub that I think is worth checking out. And this week my pick is Atune, and this is a shell history manager and syncing tool from Ellie Huxtable. And Ellie describes Atune as supercharging your productivity 
by enabling you to rapidly retrieve any command you ran at any time from anywhere. And it stores your shell history in a database and it records additional command context and syncing. It's encrypted um, and you can sync across devices. And it works with Bash, Z Shell, and Fish, and it's written in Rust. I've used it, it's really well designed. And Attune has been around for a few years um, and it's got over 13,000 stars on GitHub. But the reason I'm picking it is because Ellie posted a blog this week announcing that she's quit her, her job to work on Attune full time. And Attune um, is on GitHub sponsors, so if you or your company wants to contribute to the development, please do that. And Ellie is also looking at how to turn this into a business, but it's still going to be available for free for um, uh, open source and, and self posters. I love this so much, um, and I love seeing more people get to work on things full time. So great job, Ellie, and, and, and great work on Atune. And I've got links to the project, uh, um, the repo, and um, uh, her blog post on the show notes in the description. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So this week is the week that CES, the trade show formerly known as the Consumer Electronics Show, I think it's now just known as CES, this is the week that it takes place in Las Vegas. And there's the usual mix of, of massive TVs and weird cars and robots. Uh, but the coolest thing there, according to my friends on the ground, is um, this gadget from a company called Rabbit. And it's called the R1, and they describe it as a pocket companion. And basically, this little device, it kind of looks like Panic's um, Playdate, but it's like in reddish orange. And it's basically a little AI assistant that can answer questions for you, but also do tasks for you. And even cooler, you can train it to do more types of automations. It's $200 and it's available for pre-order now. Uh, there's no subscription required and it's going to start shipping in late March or early April. I'm a sucker for these types of gadgets um, and, and this was designed by Teenage Engineering. They're the same folks who uh, worked with Panic on the Playdate, so that's you know why the design is similar. I, I'm, anyway, I'm super excited about this, so I actually already pre-ordered one and I can't wait to, to get it and play with it. I've got links in the show notes in the description if you wanna watch Rabbit's keynote video, visit their website, uh, read some of the hands-on coverage from people at CES, but I'm a fan. Now, what was the coolest thing that you saw at CES this year? Let me know in the comments down below, or you know, let me know your thoughts on any of the other stories we covered. If you like this episode, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. It really helps out the algorithm. And subscribe to GitHub's YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.